All right, everyone, I actually did an article the other day about this on Substack. Yeah, link in the description. You should follow me there. I'm doing some journalistic content. Uh, nearly 4,000 people now following, by the way, the Substack, so it's pretty hip. Uh, it's medium without censorship. Uh, this is about student loan debt, because what you see from people like Elizabeth Warren, uh, they're always putting forth these sort of very flawed and grandiose claims about what would happen if you canceled student loan debt. Um, one of the big things, Elizabeth Warren is a big pioneer of this basic premise. Uh, she's tweeted about it multiple times. One of the basic premises that they put forth, the loan canceling crowd, is that millennials have been locked out of the housing market and things like that because of student loan debt. Now, in some cases, this is true. Um, but here's the problem. Here's my problem with this basic logic. You're, you're effectively saying that a person who has, you know, a loan, usually like 3 or 4% interest, um, who's having trouble paying it off. They get 20, 30,000 of debt. They're paying some hundreds of dollars a month as a result of this. You're saying that that's keeping them from entering the housing market. They're struggling. They're having trouble paying the loan. So instead of having 20 or 30,000 in debt at that rate, you want them to have 100, 150, 200,000 at that rate. That's basically what you're saying. We did things like this before, making it easier for people to get into housing. We caused a housing bubble and subsequently the Great Recession. To be clear, this sort of mentality is bullshit. The idea of taking people that are basically unqualified to be homeowners because they're clearly not capable of it. In some cases, it's because of poor decision making. In some cases, it's just due to the financial situation. It's no fault of their own. I have student debt myself. I don't want it canceled, by the way. I'll fucking take care of it. Government, please leave the debt alone. It is ultimately the only form of low-ish interest loan, by the way, that a lot of people can qualify for. You got some poor person, someone who's got nothing other than the fact that they have a reasonably good mind. They take out that loan. Yeah, they're paying it off long term, but at least they're able to credit build if it's within reasonable bounds. They might not have the ability to qualify for any anything that wouldn't be a high interest loan, like fucking six, seven percent, uh, under any other circumstances. It's like the only way they can potentially enter the arena. Now you're saying that people who made a poor fiscal decision, which is to take out five and sometimes six figures of loans without thinking about how they were going to pay it back. And trust me, I do not blame millennials who are otherwise, they did very well, they got good grades and shit, but they're flipping burgers. That's the government's fault. I feel nothing but sympathy. I've been in the same boat, by the way, most of my adult life until the last few years. That being said, it would be irresponsible, at this point, people who made that decision, it would be massively irresponsible to try to get them into the housing market. Again, you're saying someone with a moderate amount of debt, you know, a few tens of thousands, in most cases, I think the average debt load is about 30,000 or something, it's a lot of money, but it, that's a lot less than 150 grand, that might even be at a higher interest rate, by the way, if they've been defaulting and their credit's been destroyed, they're not going to get 3%, just to be clear about that, Warren thinks that they should buy a house, are you nuts? The only way in which most millennials are ever going to own property is if they pool themselves together with roommates. So they get a three-bedroom house and it's six roommates sharing the house. By the way, there are worse arrangements that you could have if you really want to move to suburbia. Every one of you is flipping burgers, but collectively you have the income to make it work. By the way, it's far more efficient to do that because you're, pool you're effectively, instead of having six people owning six houses, you have six people owning one house and cost-wise it's just more efficient. You're going to heat the house anyway. You're going to cool the house anyway. Many, many of the functions, the cost, doesn't really rise or fall depending on how many people are there. Are there problems with this? Yes. Is it ideal? No. Should you have to do that? No. You should be like the baby boomers. We should be like the boomers. I should be able to do what I'm doing now. Dude, I, sh I should be in a McMansion by boomer standards based on my income level. The average person in the lower middle class could work for a few years through their mortgage and it, 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 a, a regular job, working in a factory or something, and buy a house. Now, were they luxurious houses? No, they were, they were like fairly cheap prefab shit. The, the boomer dream, uh, there's a little bit of a Potemkin village feel at some points, but it was way better than the alternatives. And it still gave you your quarter acre and your picket fence and stuff and your cute little family and the, and the dog and stuff. They had that possibility. And that was a lot of boomers that had that possibility. They still own a vast proportion of the U.S. wealth. 
the Gen Xers got a little bit less because the boomers started fucking with the economy. Then the millennials got totally shit on. I feel more sorry for Gen Z because not only are they inheriting a lot of debt, they're inheriting a job market that, from the time they're little, sucks. Other than that brief Indian summer that we had under Trump, now we're back into the Biden winter of neoliberalism. Let's hope that Trump goes Grover Cleveland or, a point, or fucking uh, endorses DeSantis or something. Let's hope for that. For the benefit of, I mean, the millennials at this point, our generation can be called the next lost generation. Sorry, but we're too old now. <laughs> we missed the train. Few millennials are going to make it, ultimately. This, by the way, to all you Gen Zers and this point even some generation alphas out there that might see this i really hate to tell you this but because of my generation's older parents and in some cases younger grandparents the baby boomers because of what they did screwing us when we get old we're all going to be on public assistance and you're going to have to pay for it i really hate to say that you know, the millennials think that they've got a bad paying for the boomers wait till you have to pay for the millennials it's bullshit, and it shouldn't be happening. It's the government's fault. They created the bubble <laughs> through things like this. They created the debt crisis by throwing limitless amounts of money into the public education system, and instead of keeping the cost low for poorer kids, they just raised tuition over and over, by the way, ahead of inflation in many cases. So now instead of the average person being able to work a reasonably good summer job, Part-time, by the way, the boomers could literally do this if they had any intelligence. And then go to college and get their degree. These universities instead, now they, then that's like fucking 30, 40,000 a year. And it's all filler courses. And you, by the way, you can't even take all, you know, STEM or anything like that. You can't say, well, I'm trying to be an engineer, so I'm going to take a shit ton of math, engineering courses, architecture and stuff. You can't do that. Because you have to take Wokeness 101 and Women's Studies and, and five... Uh, African literature classes and stuff like that. And that costs a lot of money. They have, they have uh, the, the UVM, my, you know, would-be alma mater, because I, like an intelligent millennial, I fucking dropped out and decided to become self-employed to make twice as much money. UVM is eliminating an entire slew of humanities courses, anthropological courses, historical courses, English offerings. They're wiping the philosophy. They're wiping these at the classics. Those are gone. You know why? Because we were, we were in sh short on money. Because of COVID, of course, less people there. They ran short of money and space and resources and things. We got to cut courses. So instead of cutting bullshit, instead of instead of cutting late 17th century origami or something, like that, they get rid of world history. Uh, by the way, they want you to repeat history. They want you to be doomed to repeat communism. I think at this point flying the BLM flag outside the Davis Center. What a crock of horse shit that is. By the way, they're requiring you to be vaccinated to go to UVM now. Find a different university. A bunch of bullshitters up in Burlington. Yeah, this is insane. It's insane to say this person struggling with 30 grand of debt should have 150 grand of debt. And I don't begrudge the millennials at all. I am a millennial. I know what it's like to have student debt, and I know what it's like to be so poor you pick up cigarette butts off the fucking goddamn asphalt out front of Jaller General in Rutland. True story. Uh, several years. Back when I was a smoker, I quit years ago. Almost three years now, actually. This October, I quit, uh, I think it was October 1st, if I remember correctly. Three years ago. Uh, don't smoke, kids. <laughs> it's too expensive. Uh, but... Uh, economically speaking, it's just not feasible. And to think that the average millennial that's struggling to pay that, you know, $300 a month is even going to be interested in that, well, that's that extra money, that might be nice, but once inflation takes hold because you paid the debt off, that, that $300 will be worth less than the $300 it is today. They're more likely to simply just eat something other than ramen. You've got people that are pushing 40 now that live off of Campbell's Soup and live with their parents. No, it's not a healthy economy. This, this is the neoliberal post-Reagan economy. This is what Herbert Walker and Bill Clinton and Little W and, and, uh, and Jimmy Carter 2.0, Obama, this is what they built. Trump tried to fix the problem, made good inroads. It buys us a little more time, but now we're right back to square one because we've got Jimmy Carter 3.0 in there. Big problem. That's about all. Peace out.